In this video, we are going to look at an example of how to find inverse transform of a function. We're talking here about Laplace transforms, and the example we're going to look at is the following. So let's say we have a function s minus 3 divided by s minus square root of 3 times s plus square root of 3. What we want to do here is to find the inverse transform of this function. This will be written as follows. L for Laplace transform and the little minus one there stands for the inverse transform together with the L. So this is what we're looking for. The function whose transform is the function of s given inside brackets here. How do we do this? Um, with functions of this kind, um, and that is to say the rational functions, what we want to do as a first step is to use partial fraction decomposition. Um, that we're going to do separately. Let's leave it like this here. So we're going to do that separately, and then after that we're going to come back to the Laplace transform. So let's look at this rational fraction and let's see how we can decompose it into partial fractions. Um, now that I look at it a bit more, um, I realize that maybe I don't even need to decompose it into partial fractions. Maybe I can just multiply this out and get s squared minus 3 squared. Or maybe that will not be a very good idea. Okay, so let's come back to the partial fraction decomposition. Um, with the partial fraction decomposition, what we want to do is to present this fraction as as minus b. Actually, it will be, in this case, when the powers of these um, components here are 1, it will be just a, not a s minus b, but just uh, plus b, but just a. So it will be in the form of a divided by s minus square root of three plus b divided by s plus square root of three. This is the expression we're looking for to get uh, at the end of partial fraction decomposition. I'm assuming in the video that you already are familiar with how partial fraction decomposition works. I'm not going to be explaining that part into further detail, except that we are going to together try to find the a and the b. Now the method for finding a and b is to try to bring back um, the right hand side in the form of the left hand side and then by comparing uh, the result we get with this attempt we will be able to tell what the values of a and b should be. Okay, so um, in a third line where we now are going to work with a over s minus square root of 3 plus b over s plus square root of 3 and try to add it up. Um, this will give a times s plus square root of 3 plus b times s minus square root of 3 and that is divided by s minus square root of 3 times s plus square root of 3. Now we simplify the denominator of this fraction and we get a plus b times s plus a minus b times square root of 3. And that all of that is divided by s minus square root of 3 times s plus square root of 3. Okay, we're making good progress here. What we want to do now is to compare this part of the fraction with this part of the fraction here. Remember, they're supposed to be equal to each other. So if they're equal to each other, then the denominators have to be equal to each other. And if that is the case, um, we get certain information about a and b. Namely, we get that a plus b must be equal to 1. 
because the coefficient of s in this polynomial here is 1, and so if this other polynomial will have to be equal to that one, then the coefficients should match. Remember, we want the equality for all values of s, and that, that's what forces the coefficients to match. It actually goes back to linear independence of uh, functions of the form s to the power n. So we get a plus b equals 1, and then we also, comparing now the other coefficients, the ones that are in front of s to the power 0, which is 1, so there is no s, um, we also get then that a minus b times square root of 3 must be equal to minus 3. So what we get here is a system of linear equations. And what we want to do is to find a b and therefore to solve the system. Okay, so let's try to do this. Maybe we will first simplify the second equality in the system. So let's keep the first one as it is, a plus b equals to 1. And for the second one, we can divide both sides by square root of 3, and maybe minus square root of 3, and then we'll get b minus a equals um, square root of 3. So we have a plus b equals 1, and b minus a equal to square root of 3. From the, let's say, first equality, we find that a is equal to 1 minus b, and putting this into the second equality gives b minus 1 minus b equals to square root of 3. And that makes 2b minus 1 equal to square root of 3. That makes 2b equals square root of 3 minus 1. That makes b equals square root of 3 minus 1. The whole thing divided by 2. And if b is that, then a should be 1 minus that. So it will be 1 minus square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. And that's the same as 2 minus square root of 3 plus 1 over 2. And that is the same as 3 minus square root of 3 over 2. We've got the a and the b we were looking for. So we can now write that s minus 3 divided by s minus square root of 3 times s plus square root of 3 is equal to okay so we have a is that so we have it what we have there is 3 minus square root of 3 over 2 divided by s minus square root of 3 and then we have plus and the b is equal to square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 and that whole thing is divided by s plus square root of 3. It was a long calculation so maybe it would be a wise thing to do to check that we didn't make a mistake. How can we check that? We can try to add the two fractions on the right hand side of the equality and see if we do get the left hand side of the equality or not. Okay, so let's try to do that. I'm actually going to skip this part in the video, not to take too much time. And then I'm going to show you um, the result of, of what I did. It turns out that I did make a mistake. And the mistake that I made was here. Um, uh, when, I, when we had here 2b minus 1 equals square root of 3, and after that we wrote 2b equals square root of 3 minus 1, it should have been plus 1. So now I changed it to plus 1. Accordingly, the a works out to be not 3 minus square root of 3 over 2, but 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. And putting these now correct values into the expression, and then doing the checking, um, works out right. So um, what we get as a result of partial fraction decomposition is um, this expression over here. Why do we want something like that? Well, remember, what we wanted to do is to find the Laplace transform of the rational function. Namely, uh, to be more precise, not the transform, but the inverse transform, right? So, um, the inverse transform of s minus 3 over uh, s minus square root of 3 times s plus square root of 3 
Now it turns out to be equal to the inverse transform of 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 divided by s minus square root of 3 plus square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 divided by s plus square root of 3. The reason why we did that, the partial fraction decomposition, is because in the next step what we want to do is to make use of linearity of the inverse transform. Just like the Laplace transform, the inverse transform is, is linear. And so that means that the inverse transform this whole of this whole expression will be the uh, similar expression of the inverse transforms. And even the coefficients will come out of the inverse transform because of linearity. So we will, in the end we will get 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 times the inverse transform of 1 minus uh, 1 over sorry square root of 3 and here we have plus square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 times the inverse transform of 1 over s plus square root of 3. Now the question is what do we do from here? And the answer to that question is that here we're going to make use of the formulas for Laplace transforms of certain familiar functions. Namely, the formulas that are going to be relevant here um, are the following. We had a formula um, of the form Laplace transform of e to the power a t or it could be x um, is equal to 1 over s minus a and we can see that this expression here matches nicely with that provided we take a to be equal to square root of 3 it even matches with the other one with a different choice of a and namely a being equal to minus square root of 3. Now the whole idea of the inverse transform is that the inverse transform recovers back the function from, from which you transformed. So because we have this formula that Laplace transform of e to the ax is equal to 1 over s minus a, we also have the formula that e to the ax equals the inverse transform of 1 minus, one, sorry, 1 over s minus a. Um, once again, conceptually, what the inverse transform does, it recovers back um, the function that was transformed. So if transform of this is that, then the inverse transform of that will be this, which is what uh, the second equality claims. Great. So what we're going to do now is to incorporate this information into our calculation. So from the previous equality we can now write equals 1 minus square root of 3 divided by 2 times e to the power ax. What is a? a is square root of 3. And in the other term we're going to have square root of 3 plus 1 or maybe I should write for um, symmetry of the expression 1 plus square root of 3 divided by 2 e to the power minus square root of 3x. Originally we wanted to find the inverse transform of a given rational function and through the calculation we managed to do it. It is the expression given on the right hand side of the equality. Great, so there are many many such uh, examples one can work out by making use of formulas such as this but also similar other formulas like the ones for trigonometric functions and so on. And all of them work through the same um, steps of first taking the rational function uh, using partial fraction decomposition and then once you do that and check it's correct then making use of linearity of the inverse transform to finally make use of the formulas to um, get to the answer.